tough PvZ on Taldering Mountain. I think that's right. Hey there. Uh, uh, we'll see. Finally, the bottom left-hand corner of Yansu. The blue Zerg player named Pig. Grandmaster Zerg. Yep. His opponent up From in the top right. Canada. Oh, Canada. Red Protoss, one of Roddy's teammates. A boot. Um, and an amazing multitasker. I'm going to talk about a strong Protoss player and a great streamer. Well, how much are going to help one of them die immediately? Is there a Yesterday I had a day off, my first day off in seven days. I had a lovely day, 14 hours on the couch, doing absolutely nothing. I tried to do a little bit of research on Jake, as I mentioned, I saw his series back then against Hog. I asked him around a little bit, asking him, um, Curious to see what other players said about Jig. Handerless said that Jig is probably the best unknown Zerg there is out there. Uh, while we are just adjusting a few things, so I'm kind of losing my train of thoughts. But Handerless mentioned Jig as one of the best unknown Zergs in North America. He said he's really good. He might have not had his major breakthrough yet, but anyone who plays against him knows how good he is. Uh, from other people, I heard that you know he likes to stay on two bases for quite some time against Protoss. Now, uh, from the games I've seen, I'm not sure if that's necessarily true. What I can say is that he's a player that likes to play it safe and, you know, perhaps he took some notes of how Scarlet likes to play ZVP. Yeah, I can go up to three bases, but if you're going for that big two base all in, take out my third. If I just stabilize on my two bases, I'm going to be ahead in the long run because my tech is going to be more developed. I think that's something uh, that we're going to see from Jig much more likely than him just staying on two bases because, hey, he has a function plan for his two base track. I am eager to see what he does pull off here. Uh, it's always fun seeing some of these... Uh, truly North American players, right? Root Sage uh, playing in WCS America. Uh, we all know that he is Korean. So uh, Jig, the Canadian, going to show us what the hometown boys have been brewing. Mm -hmm. And we see that he has gone for a pretty standard looking opening spawning pool hatchery into gas. That's an early-ish gas, probably for a Zergling speed. Uh, this is a little bit of a Yon opening. This is how Yon likes to open. Just, you know, you get the quick hatchery, but after that you immediately research speed. And maybe he just makes four speed links. Who cares? As long as he has map control. As long as he knows there is no hidden probe or crutching probe hidden pylon somewhere out on the map. You know what I've been thinking about, Ben? I think the only thing that Starcraft really misses, in Warcraft 3 we had this upgrade called Spiked Barricade. It was a pretty useless upgrade because units attack kind of slow, but Protoss armor, Proto or not Protoss, Orc buildings got spikes around it, so every time that like melee units would attack, they would take a little bit of damage. I think this would be a great upgrade for proxy pylons around the map for <laughs> Zerglings, like bumping their head into spikes and then they would just all die. <laughs> this sounds like the worst idea you've ever had. Really? <laughs> well, I was already planning to send an email to David Kim. I think he would like it. Uh, yeah. Just have like a meat grinder circling around your pylon. It could be an upgrade for all I can. I hope that his uh, Roddy emails are set to go to the spam folder <laughs> in that case. They probably are. I haven't heard anything from David in a long run. <laughs> 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 it's like your pylon with those little things spinning around it, they just become blades. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's exactly what I have in mind. In Warcraft 3, we used to have this uh, item called the lightning shield as well. That's kind of what I have in mind, but then instead of lightning shield, you know, just make it spikes. Because this is Starcraft. <laughs> uh, Jake is still mining gas, by the way. He didn't stop after a hundred, so now I'm starting to feel that he might have something up his sleeve. He's going to play again up, and, or he's going to go up against a relatively greedy stage, because that was a really quick target. Uh, he's still Star working on his... Well, he has a sentry on the way, of course, he has the, f uh, has the mothership core, but Sage doesn't really see a whole lot. I'm wondering if this is going to be Roach Speedling. I, I don't maybe feel like... Maybe he wants to go super quick layer. I think maybe he wants to go very quick layer. Maybe he wants to go... No. He's actually taking a third base. So, so why is he still mining gas? Likes having gas. I like having gas too, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time there's a reason why you keep mining gas. That's a very quick layer. So maybe he's banking on Hydra Link. Could be defend. Hydra Ling. There's also no Evo Chambers. He could just be thinking to go fast uh, Muta. But he's not got uh, he's not got the extra extractors. So that doesn't actually make sense. He's but making Speedlings. It could be a Nidus build. Mm. But if it was a Nidus, I don't think there was a need for him to throw down. He's getting Spore Crawlers now as well. I think it was. I think he just wants to open up the route to Hydra Lisk very quickly so he can uh, rely on Hydra Lisk if he has to deal with this Stargate into Gateway Pressure, which is something that Sage did in my 
was it on this map or was it on Frost? You guys are gonna have to correct me. I think it was actually on Frost, but Sage did it against Hyun and successfully, because he won that game, but he lost the series. Here come the extra gases, so I think you're actually exactly right, Kev. Uh, the extra gas would give him the ability to uh, invest in those hydras. Fire is still not out of the question, though. Uh, we'll see what it ends up being. There's a lot of lings out on the map for Jig, but he's not doing much with them, just knocking down some rocks and making sure that he's safe in the early game. Phoenix is start picking away these overlords, but it's going to take a little while, and I'm sure that the Jig is completely fine with that. He's like, all right, you take some damage on your Phoenix, and eventually you're able to pick up. One of my overlords, we hope. I can live with that. Meanwhile, I'm making 10 drones, so that overlord already paid for itself. A lot of speedlings out on the map, but they won't be able to get anything done. As there's that mothership core, and of course, there's this entry as well. Door is closed and locked tight. Those lings not getting in at all. Evo Chamber is now going to go down for Jig. I'm starting to think that he was planning to go Muta, and then upon seeing these phoenixes change gears. Uh, we'll see, though. One of the queens got picked off as it was in transition between both bases. Uh, perhaps a little sloppy as queens are of course a more expensive loss than Overlord. He doesn't really have to lose them. He's making a lot of sports. He's up to 5 or 6 sports right now over all the bases. Uh, I think it might be a slight overreaction because he's not on an absolutely booming economy yet. He's only on 47 drones. Yeah, he's basically got a 2 base economy spread across yeah. 3 base. hatcheries. Uh, there's Hydrogen going down. Kind of late though. Yeah, it is a little late. It's going to be hard for... Like, if you want to make Hydra City with the Phoenixes, why are you making, like, nine sports all the time? Yeah. I feel that uh, it's getting a little redundant, because both things will save. That, that Hydra is also going down at the same time as the Robotics Bay, meaning that Colossi are not far off, so... Meaning that Hydra list timing are very far off. Right? Yeah. Basically non-existent. It would be uh, a bad idea to attack into Colossi. And yeah. I mean, so far, Jig's build's just seeming a little lean, kind of... Kind of question. Well, Hydra Speed, the first upgrade out of that Hydra Din, so it looks like he does want to do some kind of speedling Hydra timing. Yeah, but there's not really a timing window for him anymore, as you mentioned. There's going to be uh, Colossus out, and as soon as Colossus are out, <laughs> this is a little deceiving. It looked like those links were going to be able to squeeze through, but Sage, of course, a very experienced Protoss player, and knows how to wall up. He's getting Void Rays now as well, just in case he has to worry about something that he didn't see yet, maybe a crazy amount of roaches, as sometimes Zerg players like to answer against. Target builds with just a ridiculous amount of roaches, but they don't have to worry about that either. But this forgery will eventually serve its purpose. Yes. I mean, these phoenixes really paid for themselves, Kev. 16 mm -hmm. units killed here, 1,050 resources, a couple of queens, a couple of overlords, a few drones. Mm -hmm. 16 is not even that much, though. Like, as it were, not very expensive pickups. I think it's good, but I've, I've had scenarios where you can pick up 25, 26 units. But uh, the best thing that these phoenixes have done is forcing so many spore crawlers that the economy has never been that good. Yeah. If you pick up 16 units, but your opponent is 25 workers ahead, it's kind of bad for you. But if you do it while you're on even economy, then it's very good. Speedling scout the Colossus and the third base of Sage. And Sage is immediately going to have to... Oh, he's going to make nine more Hydras. That's a fun choice. Uh, also dropped the Spire, so maybe he's wanting to get some Corruptors out. Uh, it's also not unheard of to switch from Hydra into Muta. Ooh. but. What did the Voidory do there? Voidory got lost. Voidory gets picked off. Face for it. I'm not sure what the Voidory is. Maybe I uh, was just uh, on the mission with Observer trying to deny a couple of creep tuins here and there, but a little risky and a little expensive. This is my way of dealing with creep tuins. Sacrifice uh oh, Voidory. Phoenix is out of position. One Phoenix is going to get picked off as well, so these Hydra is finally starting to be a little effective. Now you can see already how close the unit lost step is. It's 3 against 21, but <laughs> those Protoss units were very expensive. Yeah, that's the, that's the downside when you lose. Anything Protoss. I'm very curious to see what he's going to do with that Spire Ban. He might just wait. He might just bank up a lot of resources and then, and then he's going to face a crazy amount of Colossus and Void Rays. But if he then switches into a lot of Mutalis, I wish he would have just saved up all that money and fly into the main base with like 15 to 20 I don't 20 know what Mutalis. he thinks he's going to do against Force Field and Colossi with these Hydras. I mean, it, of course, it's possible to get good engagements with big concaves where you just kill what Protoss has, but... Yancey's a little choky, Kev. There's not many places on the map where you can hope for an engagement like that. No, I'm not sure about it either. As I said, I would have loved to see him just bank up those resources, try later on to trade reasonably well, or just as soon as Protoss even thinks about moving out, make a crazy amount of Muta. Sage just playing such an old school style of PC yep. too. He's just sitting back, building up that army, and about 170 supplies, and they'll probably try to go do something. Jig's gonna attack into this. <laughs> this is such a good fight, this, <laughs> this Sage. <is laughs> And on the other hand, such a bad fight for Jig. He's going to kill a couple of Zealots, but Force Field, Time Warp, Colossi. These are all the things you need to deal with Hydra. Or, yeah, with Hydras. As we see Corruptors in mm. the production tab now. 
so we're not going to see the big muta switch that I was kind of hoping or perhaps anticipating for as well. Uh, you can see that Sage is kind of worried about that big muta switch. He's like, hey, that was a really silly fight from you to take. Why would you want to take that fight? Oh, uh, wait a minute. If you fly into my base right now with 25 muta disc, I'm going to have a hard time with three phoenixes. So he's immediately even throwing down the fleet beacon. He's yeah. convinced of what I was convinced about. That's an incredibly smart read from Sage. Unfortunately, it's, it's the wrong one. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. As it, like Those phoenixes are still going to serve an okay purpose against all these corruptors. But I can't blame Sage for making the conclusion that he's making right now. Uh, he's even throwing down defensive cannons. <laughs> Sage is so sure of what I thought was going to happen. I, you know, it's Makes we, me feel good I about think, myself. I think we all thought it. Okay, we were talking yeah. about the Muta Switch, and then Jake's just like, nah, I think I'm going to just go Hydra Corruptor. Um... You know, with only three Colossus. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, he's now investing all that gas into Phoenixes. This could backfire. Well, if he just right-clicks on those Colossus and is able to pick two Colossus off before the fight really starts, then these Hydras might still be able to win the fight for Jig, because obviously the Phoenix is not going to be very good. Oh my god, uh -oh. here we go, Ben. Oh, corruption used. Colossi fallen. One is down. Second one's going to go down as well. You're so sick. Oh, no. Sage, too smart for his own good. The last Colossus is also going to fall. Still, this Protoss army is going to hold the line, though. That's a lot Whoa, of Phoenixes. With 17 additional Hydras on the way. Yeah, of course, the Protoss army is going to clean this up for now. And I love the use of Graviton Bean over there. He's picking up a lot of Hydras. But with those 19 additional Hydras, Sage is going to have to sit back for a little while and make Colossus again. He is producing one. Wow, every single Hydra. Uh, if he had, like, push. two or three more Corruptors and those Colossus would have died that bit quicker, it, it could have all been different. Now Sage is like, well, okay, then I'll make a second Robo, man. <laughs> Didn't know you want to play this game. And then Sage actually has, like, all the tech. He's, like, on double Stargate, Fleet Beacon, Twilight Council, double Robo. Jig actually just showed us the sickest mind game ever. <laughs> 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 it still didn't work out. That Protoss army was just a little too strong. Slightly too large. Uh, it's still 150 Zerg supply against 150 Protoss supply, but with Colossi yeah. re-entering the fray and more Void Rays in production, it's going to be much harder for Zerg to be effective. Fourth of base, course. we can see, about to be started. Phoenixes can be extremely good against Hydralisk if the Hydralisk are in small numbers. As soon as it goes to up to like 8, 9, 10, 11 Hydras, it's very hard to fly with your Phoenix into it. Because by the time... Certainly 27. Yes. No. A few too many. Because the Phoenix will just die one by one before they can even lift anything off or whatever. But against small groups of Hydras, they are extremely good. Of course, the Hydras are a light armored unit, so they take double damage. Found the fourth base. Immediately cancelled. Good job here from Jig. Mm -hmm. It's 170 Zerg supply against 180 Protoss supply. But Sage knows that all he has to do right now is just sit back, make sure he has enough Colossus. He's not going to get surprised by a Muda switch anymore because he has plenty of Phoenixes. And did he ever research... Uh, any impulse crystals? <laughs> <laughs> the Phoenix Rain? Yeah. <laughs> yes, man, but I was trying to look for the official meaning. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm unofficial here, bro. Uh, Casual I always Friday. call it Phoenix Rain. <laughs> Casual Friday? Yeah. It's not even Friday. <laughs> <laughs> or is it? I know. I lose track of the days, man. I think it's Thursday. No, it's Wednesday. It's hard to keep track when you're when you're in the office six days yes. a week. <laughs> and then one week you're, you're, you're off on a Tuesday, and the next week you're off on a Friday. Like yesterday I could have sworn it was Friday. Like, I was just convinced it was Friday. Yesterday was a Sunday for me, man. Meanwhile, hallucinated phoenixes are all over the map. And the reason why it was a Sunday is, as I said before, I did absolutely nothing. Other than laying on the couch, watch a little bit of GSO, watch a little bit of Challenger. It's like Jig's trying to make something happen with his Zergling run by. Yeah, he lost a lot of links for him already, unfortunately. Too many cannons are on the map. There's He's just going to max up on links and hydras, which I find very interesting. And with interesting means that I think it's, you know, it's, it's slightly confusing. I felt on the second time he had a small window when uh, Sage, you know, did Sage misread him? Well, Sage kind of just made the read that most Protoss players would make and what most Protoss yeah. players would be afraid of. Uh, but I felt Jig had a minor window there, but perhaps he was oh, just oh, not Phoenixes. rich enough. You know, Hydra Ling is one of the best early mid-game army compositions Zerg can build against Protoss. I mean, when you're 20 minutes in... 47 Hydras, man. It loses its gusto. How often do you see 47 Hydras? I don't know if I've ever seen 47 Hydras. I want to see them down. Well, Hydra Bane now. I'm just trying to figure out what this is good against. Oh, he was morphing a lot of Banings, but he was forced to cancel all of them as Sage was engaging on that little army. How many classes do we have? great against Zealot Archon. We only have five Corruptors as well. I don't really see what five or seven Corruptors we'll be able to establish against all these Colossus. And more importantly, all the Void Rays. The Void Rays will charge up and melt those Corruptors so fast. Uh, I don't really... Like, the only way that Jig can really win a fight is if Sage is, like, move commands into you know, his a army. base race might 
be a reasonable conclusion here, but it looks like Jake's thinking that he needs to fight it. More Corruptors on the way. Jig is just buying time for himself right now. He knows that the five Corruptors that he had, that's just simply not going to be enough. He freed up some supply. He's going to be able to go up to 12 Corruptors now, but I'm afraid even 12 is not enough. Yeah, He's going to need like 20. Not an army that's real easy to fight. Look how fast these Hydras die. Here comes Sage melting through the lines of Zerg units. Corruptors will not last long against those charged Void Rays, and that's going to do it for Jig in game number one. That is a one-sided fight. If ever I have seen one, Sage looking very strong there.